I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. We are going to keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. That's President Trump addressing CPAC, the annual Conservative Political Action Conference. The group is a platform for conservative activists and elected officials. Traditionally, it's been a way for Republicans to underscore their conservative credentials. Dr. Zudi Jasser is the founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, and he'll be speaking on a panel at CPAC this year. It's nice to see you, sir. Thank you for talking with us. It's great to be with you, Solda. Thank you for having me. Thank you. You bet. Um, you are a doctor. You're a veteran of the U.S. Navy. Your parents were Syrian uh, refugees. Much of the rhetoric that has come out of the White House uh, of late is against Muslims, frankly. Uh, and conservatives, uh, I think, often conflate uh, Muslims with radical Islam. How That's problematic, isn't it? Well, I think some of the verbiage has been problematic. I think that it's not the sentiment to be anti-Muslim. I believe that there's just been a lack of accuracy or nuance in mixing up Islamists, which are a theocratic global movement, with Muslims in general. And I think we have to also, in the conservative movement, be careful into not only saying what we're against, which is radicalism and political Islam, but talking about what we're for, like families like mine that are in America, because we're for liberty and for freedom. And uh, I, I would push back against sort of the mainstream dogma that somehow the right is anti-Muslim. That's really what the Islamists want to paint the right as being. And I've never felt in, at any moment that there's any bigotry or significant pushback against being Muslim and being a conservative. I don't think that it is unusual for people, not only in the administration, but conservative voices to, to really sort of pitch Muslims and Islam as a force to be be fought with, almost like we're at a war. Well, I would be careful in painting their lack of nuance and separating Islamism, which is a global movement that includes hundreds of millions, from the Muslim Brotherhood to Jamaat Islami in Pakistan to the Wahhabis of Saudi Arabia. Many of our so-called allies are actually cauldrons of this movement. So I, in many ways, look upon it internally as a Muslim that I need to do a better job in explaining that we are not all Islamists, that we are, many of us, are, are at home in an America that separates church and state, and we need to separate mosque and state. And I think conservatives need to hear that message. And yes, I will push back against those that say Islam or Muslims is a problem, but work with those who believe that Islamists and anti-Islamist reformist Muslims in our Muslim reform movement that's bipartisan are the solution. What does it literally look like to be a, a reformist in an American democracy and be a devout Muslim? We believe we don't have a, a, a monopoly on heaven, that uh, it's open to other faiths, and that we uh, believe in the secular governance rather than the Islamic State concept. And the reason we formed, we do not believe you can do effective counterterrorism and counterradicalization unless Muslims start adopting these 21st century ideas, because the Al-Qaeda's, the ISIS's of the world will continue to regenerate like a whack-a-mole program until we go through the same process that created America, France, and other secular democracies. The president's travel ban uh, focused on seven countries that were majority Muslim. And when you look back uh, at 9-11, which I, I unfortunately covered uh, for a long time, um, you know, none of the 9-11 attackers came from those countries. And so it seemed that there was um, a different message that was being being sent uh, in that travel ban. Yeah, I think that, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, there's countries that I would say as a reformist, which should be included, include Saudi Arabia, Pakistan. Those seven countries are not about the fact that they're Muslim, but that they're cauldrons that are anarchical. The governments are unreliable tyrannies that are, you know, whether it's Syria or, or Yemen or Somalia or Iran, that really we can't rely on helping us vet terror groups. So it's not about Muslims. It's not about banning. It's about a pause. And yes, the messaging has been very problematic from the administration. I think they need to clarify that we're not banning Muslims, but actually embracing those who share our values. Dr. Jasser, thank you for talking with us today.